I'm starting to get the impression that uh, these writers don't know how to write. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. It's one of those wherever you're at. This is Pop Culture Rocks, and I'm Hammerhand, and I don't think that these writers know how to write. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm sure that they don't know how to write for the crowd that's interested in the particular product that they have here. That's why these writers and directors and actors aren't hired to write, direct, or uh, act anymore. They're they're cast to do this. Now, a friend of the channel, Gary Nerdrotic, he don't know me, but I know him. Uh, said that a while ago, and he's not wrong. These people are cast into these roles so that they will tow a line. Let's get over here and take a peek real quick at uh, Bounding into Comics Man, the inimitable J.B. Augustine, reporting Monarch Legacy of Monsters, which is not really. It, it's, a, it's a legacy of high school drama and... Uh, melodramatic acting, and, and it's boring. EP episode director Matt Shackman disagrees that the monster versus humans are lackluster. See this picture right here of old Godzilla? Look, I, I liked this quite a bit when he's walking up on one of the little fat man and little boy uh, imitations, and they detonate this motherfucker right in front of his face. I'm liking that. I'm liking that but I have real problems with all of the stuff that is surrounding it. All of the sexual politics, all of the identity politics, acting, fake acting, as a matter of fact, like women were kept in chains underneath beds in boxes just to breed and stuff their husbands or boyfriends. It's an annoying thing that I see all over the place now. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. The attempt to rewrite and redefine history uh, here is nauseating, and it's it's falling on deaf ears with a lot of people. And I'm not saying that it's that intense with this particular show, but it's there. It's it's all over this show. I mean, they wear it like a cheap suit. Let's read the caption here. Godzilla comes ashore to take the bait of an H bomb in Monarch. Legacy of Monsters. This is the first and only time that you have seen Gojira. The first and only time in five episodes for what about three minutes, maybe three minutes. And you didn't even see all of them. You just kind of saw him walk up there, a younger version of himself, took the neutron bait, the atomic energy bait, and then just disappeared. That was it. A common criticism of Legendary Pictures' Monsterverse is it lacks strong and memorable human characters. I'd go a little farther than that and say strong and decent men. They're, they're not there. They're not there. They're weak. They're limp-wristed. They're wet noodles. They're pushed into the background in almost everything that you see them in, in the uh, Monsterverse. Oh, man. They rarely measure up to Brian Cranston's performance in Gareth Edwards' 2014 Godzilla a film that started the whole thing, and the kaiju routinely upstaged them. Well, you know, it's going to be kind of hard <laughs> not to get upstaged by uh, 350 feet tall Pacific dwelling monsters. That is honestly what viewers would rather see, ourselves included. Monsters brought to life with cutting-edge visual effects, tearing up stuff in a tooth-and-claw slugfest. I won't disagree with you on that. I won't disagree with you on that. Does it have to be every single show? No, it doesn't have to be. But the point of this show... Hold on, let me get back to the big hit, right? What's the point of this show? What is the point? Like, Monarch. What's the point of Monarch? <laughs> It's like a, it's a it's worse than a daily soap opera. It's worse than a daily soap opera. 
It, and this last one, episode five, was a filler episode. And it sucked. It sucked. You, you don't learn anything. There's, there's, it's like a carnivore looking for red meat to chomp on. Of course, that analogy doesn't hold strong with all of these lettuce eaters, does it? No, it sure don't. You're looking for something to bite into, man. You're looking for something to drag you, kicking and screaming into this damn show. And there ain't nothing. There ain't nothing. It's just a bunch of catty, lesbian drama between two chicks. And then there's two more chicks. And then there's two more chicks. There's like six women running around around two guys in this whole damn thing. It's all about feelings. It's all about sitting around and drinking coffee or having your less bean lover that you're cheating on come up and kiss y'all all over the neck and show you the geysers is human beings too. Gay! <laughs> I'm tired of this shit. I'm tired of this shit. Of course, I have an opportunity to produce my own stuff now. And I'll be doing that. And I'm not going to bomb you out in every single episode of this that I put up of, about whatever I'm talking about. But I am going to give it to you a little more frequently so that it doesn't leave your mind. Let's get back over here and uh, finish reading this crap. No offense, uh... Hold on, what's his name? No offense, JB. Is not, you're, you're writing, not crap. I'm just saying, crap, crap. You know what I'm talking about. That takes care of that, but this development might not improve the lot of our human protagonists. It might even be detrimental to what are seen as thin characterizations already on thinner ice. Most of the people populating the MonsterVerse are connected to Monarch in some way, which has deeper roots than anyone imagined a decade ago. Look, I, I agree with that, and I don't mind exploring uh, the mystery and the subterfuge around Monarch. I don't have a problem with that. I think that that's a pretty good way to go. And if you start interconnecting that with monster appearance appearances, with kaiju appearances, which is what the fucking show is supposed to be about, I mean, it's named after them. Right? Well, no, they're they're gonna come back on me and say, well, no, it's it's named Monarch Hammer. I yeah, okay, I got you. So it's named Monarch. Apple TV Plus series Monarch Legacy of Monsters is picking up the slack in adding depth to the individuals and families on the ground while throwing in some new titans along the way. The show boasts an impressive cast headlined by Kurt and Wyatt Russell. Uh, Kiersey Clemens and Anna Sawai. I don't know who the hell they are, and I don't care. I'm a little disappointed that the Russell boys are kind of being sidelined. I'm a little disappointed by that. They're the most interesting thing about the show so far. Now, I understand you got to give some room to these brand new ass actors that have to get it, they got to breathe a little bit, right? I, I understand that. I get it. But it's slow going, my friend. It is slow. We need a little bit more than what we got. We need some more monster. We need some more destruction. We need some more mystery and intrigue. And a lot less of this fucking lipstick lesbian crap that we're getting with this lead actress girl. That's just my opinion. You want this show to succeed? You want this show to be better? Do exactly what I just said, and it will be better, and it will be received well. Do not do that, and you might not get a season two. That's just what it's going to be. It also has a noteworthy executive producer, Matt Shackman, who directed the first two episodes of Discussing Film, asked him who directed the first two episodes of, come on, guys, can't do that. You don't go right into the next sentence like that. Discussing film asked him about the human characteristics in the shared universe, and he now has a hand in, that he now has a hand in, and Shackman begs to differ with all the harsh critics of their potency in the story. 
I don't share that opinion about the MonsterVerse movies. What, that every every man that you see is a piece of shit or a bad dad? Now, they kind of broke the mold a little bit with the female. You know, when you had King Ghidorah, uh, King Ghidorah, <laughs> you know, they kind of broke the mold a little bit with the female being an absolute psychopath, the female scientist, an absolute psychopath, right? But all of that was contingent on the fact that she had a bad husband. And she had to carry the load. Blah, 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 blah. The uh, episode pointed to the ensemble ensemble cast. The uh, MV, are we calling it the MV now? The monster verse is used to by now. I mean, if you just think about Kong Skull Island, I try not to. I try not to. I didn't care for John Goodman's acting in it. I thought that was kind of shit. Uh, John C. Riley has always been a fucking goof. I don't like him. Brie Larson is a plank of wood. Tom Hiddleston was barely acknowledgeable in it. Give me a fucking break, would you? There are incredible characters in that movie. Where? Where? Matt Shackman, where? Where are those incredible characters at? I didn't see them. And they're very memorable, and their stories are unique. Uh huh. Yeah. What was the story? Can any of y'all think of the story? Can you remember it? Uh, uh. They went to an island. Uh, there was some evil shit there. But you, beyond that, you don't remember nothing. Don't lie to me. I know better. To Shackman, the human perspective should serve the scale of the monsters. <sighs> One of the things that was most important for us is when we were doing monster action, it was from the point of view of humans. I would agree with that. As a matter of fact, I would agree with that. And we were telling the story from ground level. I would agree with that as well. When you start to zero in on scope and scale and the hopelessness of trying to avoid one of these things, even if they're not coming after you, even if they're just walking in your direction or battling in your direction, the chances of getting smoked are really good. So, yes, I would agree with that 100%. Uh, we're not trying to, we're not flying high in the sky at Godzilla's level, which is where I think a lot of the movies exist. We were more interested in how is this monster event affecting the humans that we love and care about. Well, first, homeboy, hold on. Let me get back to the big hit. First, you have to make people care and love the care, care about and love characters. I hate these characters. The ones that I do like, I haven't seen enough of. When Kurt Russell's son, back in the 1940s, starts talking to the Asian chick, and he says, hey, uh, we can't act like you guys aren't oppressed and we haven't kept you down and in a box with chains on your feet. When he said, and he didn't say that ver verbatim, I'm exaggerating. But when he said that, I wanted to fucking puke. I wanted to puke. Why can't we go one goddamn series without, without this, this severe, serious, political feministic, ridiculous crap about where everybody has to get their respect and their rights from. Just tell a fucking story. Just tell a story. And I think everything will be just fine. Just tell the story. Stop going back over and over and over all of this fucking garbage. I just want to hear a good God story. We don't need to keep hearing about why women were free, why they got the 19th Amendment, how many slaves were in the United States on the East Coast in 1670. Who fucking cares? I don't care. I just want to hear a good story. And every time I turn on a fucking episode of whatever, whenever, it's this potpourri of humanity. It's not a bunch of white people talking about white shit or black people talking about black shit or Asians doing Asian shit. It's all of these motherfuckers that are peppered in. Salad bowl. It's the melting pot. But it's not. Nobody lives like this. And you're being gaslit into oblivion with these people in Hollywood. That's just my two cents. Let's finish reading the article. Earlier in the interview, Shackman expressed his admiration for Legendary Series and shared 
his Goji fan bona fides. You see, you can't even say fucking Kaiju right or Gojira. Makes me fucking sick. I'm a big fan. Then they all say that, don't they? Don't they? Hold on. I got to do it. Big head. Big head time. What did all the assholes in the She-Hulk writing room say? Under the John Byrne. John Byrne. John Byrne. John Byrne. I'm a big fan. I read She-Hulk when I was growing up. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. You fucking lied right to my face. And then on top of that, you spent $250 million on what? $250 million to go after YouTubers. What the fuck? And then Loki, how did Loki go from glorious purpose to being a putz? Somebody that gets punched in the face and kicked in the balls every three episodes. This is what you got. If you want to tell your fans to go fuck themselves, I mean, there are easier ways. You could just tell them to get, get the fuck out if you don't want them as fans. We're courting new fans now. I love the movies. I love Gareth's Godzilla. I love Jordan Voigt. Is it is that Vought? Vought? Vought Roberts? Never heard of that. Kong Skull Island, and I think uh, that's a tremendously stylish film. Well, it was too fucking stylish. I like what Adam Wingard did with Godzilla versus Kong. I love the scale of them. I love the characters. I loved Godzilla since I was a kid, you know? I don't believe you. That's a good fucking... That, to me, when I was watching this right here, see that picture? That was some fucking scary shit. Right there. That was scary. That was scary. I liked it quite a bit. But uh, I don't believe these people when they say that they've read this. They they loved that. They cradled and cherished because they shit can canon and lore in everything that they do. Actors, we don't want the, we don't want our actors to read any of this. We don't want them to become familiar with the characters. We don't want them to know their idiosyncrasies. We just want them to be gay and lame. And they are. And that's why nobody watches this shit. Give me 250 million bucks and I'll make you 10 billion. But no, we can't do that because there's too much testosterone in that motherfucker's idea. These people make me sick. It disgusts me. It disgusts me to see what's going on with entertainment out here today. But it is what it is. You see what I'm saying? And it's not going to last. It simply can't last. You see, the comic industry is falling apart. You see that the music industry is basically privatized. And it's going away. Movies will do the same thing. Television will do the same thing. People are going to start making their own entertainment because the folks that, that brought it to you before are no longer reliable. They are all mad. And they deserve their fate. 